This video is going to be all about the marking analyzer working with filters and conditions as well as alerts. So the, the scenario here and the question that was asked to us is um, basically is there a way for me to set up the marking analyzer in NT with multiple conditions? Okay, I want to tell it to alert me if the CCI is above 120 but it also has to be above the SMA35. Do you have a video if this is even possible? Well, Yes, it is possible, and we're going to show you how. Uh, you can do this with any sort of condition. So we're going to use this as an example, but if you have other conditions that you want to look for, you can do that. What you're looking at right now with our marking analyzer is the conditions that we look for is when a pattern exists, then create an alert below in that alert log and alert us. It yells out a audio file that says, hey, there's a bullish ETP2 pattern, and, and it lets you know. So anyways... We're going to keep it simple in this video. We're going to take the CCI above 120 and the SMA above 35. If those conditions exist, alert us, and we're going to work with filters and conditions. So we'll be back right after this. Okay, so to do this, I'm not going to disrupt my current setting because I am going to go back to it, but I'm going to hit this little plus sign in the bottom. This is going to open up a new marking analyzer window tab, and I'm going to work with this one. So the first thing that we want to do before we add any instruments is we want to organize our columns. Okay, so what I'll do in order to do that is right click and go down to columns. And what we need to do is add in the CCI and the SMA. So the, the indicators in this case that we have to be above in order to do some filtering. So what I'm going to do is bring this down and I'm going to look for indicators. There's a field here and there we go. Okay. And inside it automatically defaults alphabetical order to ADL, but um, there's an example of an alert. So um, we can grab our new indicator. You want CCI above 120. So I imagine the default period is going to be the same. And uh, then I'm going to add another one in for the SMA. So let me come down here and we'll pick the SMA. And this is on a one minute chart. So you're going to have to, if you wanted to look at this on a 5, a 15, a 60, you're going to have to add that in. And I'll show you a shortcut for that. Um, but what we're going to do is rename this label, which is right here. Um, so I'm just going to call it CCI and I'm going to do this on a five minute chart instead of a one minute. So that's going to be five minute and we'll change the value for the minute. And this is going to be ADL on the one minute. And the reason why I'm doing this is it just makes the tabs that much smaller and what I would consider to be more uh, user friendly when it comes to readability, but okay. So now we have the CCI five minute and not EDL. Sorry, this is a SMA. Okay, and that should be good. So we're gonna hit apply. And now if we add in, I'm just gonna exit this. Now if we add in, uh, we'll take our, uh, I'll add in some forex and I'll add in some futures. Didn't specify which market he trades, but it doesn't matter. So we have futures prices and we have Forex. This is looking a little bit messy because we have the ask, the bid, and the last price. He probably doesn't care so much about that in the marking analyzer. So I'm going to go into the columns and I'm going to remove this. So it just says this, the instrument, the CCI value, and the SMA. Okay, so now that we got that data, what we need to do is uh, apply conditions. So what I'm going to say and this is just for um, mainly visual, but uh, we'll come down here to conditions and we're gonna say for CCI, and, and this was uh, the rules of the, of the user, I'm gonna say um, we're gonna make it green if we are uh, above 120, right? So if we're above 120, greater than 120, then it's going to have the text value of blank, which is going to actually put the value there. So if I put a dash there, then anything above 120 would be written as a dash. But I imagine he would want to see 
that what the value is. Otherwise, you could put the words above 120 or whatever else you want. So now all the ones that are above 120 for CCI when I hit apply are going to be in green. So, so far that looks good. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the SMA. So I'm going to come down to the SMA. I'm going to hit add. I'm going to go to my background. I'm going to change this to a slightly different color green. And I'll use white and we'll say if it is greater than 35, which was the example in the question. Okay. So we'll hit OK and hit apply. Now our SMA should be green, right? For anything above 35. And that looks good. Okay. So now how do we get it alerted to the bottom? Well, we need to uh, configure that with our alerts. But what I want to do is filter these down so I don't see any rows that don't have both of those conditions matched. So you can see that this row does, this row does, but some of these others don't have either both of the conditions. So what I want to do is I want to add in a filter. So I'm going to add in a filter condition for each of the columns. So I'm going to start with CCI. I'll hit add and I'll say uh, if it is greater then 120, sorry, it says hide row if less than 120, right? Because he wanted to be greater than 120. So we're going to hide it if it's less than 120. Okay, so we're going to press OK. And I'm going to go to the SMA. I'm going to apply the same filter, but this time we're going to say hide it if it is less than 35 because he wanted to know when it's above 35. So we'll hit OK. And we're just going to hit apply. Now, once we do that, there we go, you'll see that nothing's really changed. And it's, I don't know if that's a probably a poor thing. If, if, if you have filters in your mark analyzer condition, it should turn this next setting on. But you actually have to right click and you have to say uh, row filter. And once you do that, everything gets cleared out and you're left with both values and the instruments that have both values. Okay, so now you have that, but let's just say you want to create an alert for it. Uh, you would right click on your mark analyzer and go into your alerts. And these alerts are going to be saved in your workspace, not the mark analyzer template. You're just accessing that, uh, accessing it that way. So let's go to our name. We're going to call this uh, the CCI and SMA uh, conditions matched. Okay, so this is going to be our alert name. I'll use the same thing for the trigger message. And I'm going to have this background be... Uh, let's just say deep pink and this is going to be white that way it stands out and we're going to have um, let's just say an audio alert just the default okay and we'll hit okay or apply okay and just press okay oh we forgot our conditions okay so let's go up to our conditions we're going to add in we're going to say okay so the cci is on the five minute right if this column is greater than the numerical value of 120, okay, so just again, pick the column that you're seeing in the mark analyzer. If it's greater than, you have to switch it to a numerical value because you're not comparing it to another column. So a numerical value of 120, then press OK. And we have to add in another one because we want two conditions. You'll notice that this says add. So we want to just add another condition. So we're adding another condition saying the SMA has to be greater than the numerical value of 35. Okay, and press OK. Then we hit apply, and there's all our alerts. So now every time that that matches, we're going to get those alerts down there, and then we can just clear them away as we check them. And as new alerts come in, you're going to get those um those alert conditions uh, again. Now, with alerts, you can have them enable only once. You can have them re-enable. You can have them re-enable after a certain period of time. So you're going to have to, in your alerts, uh, figure out how you want to handle that. You'll see it says uh, rearm. So this will fire off once, and then we'll never rearm again. It's probably not what you want. Um, you can have it reset every time you connect. So you'll have to pick depending on what you want uh, and have it reset to. It will rearm itself. Um, but that's pretty much it. So I will 
uh, leave you to set that up however you want. If you use, I mean, you can get creative 20 different instruments, um, have all these built-in conditions. It does all the filtering for you, and then it can also do the alerting for you. So like I said, we do the same thing with our patterns. When a pattern exists, uh, it's going to fire it off into our alert log, and then we can go through and check them and see which ones we want to look at closer, which ones we don't, and then once we're done with them, we can clear them away. So it's really handy that way. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the uh, questions box below. Otherwise, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video.